If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we continue with the series of interviews with old school legend Jerry Brainham. And in this video, you will hear Jerry talk about his time training at Vince's gym in California. In this video, you will hear Jerry talking about Vince Gironda's antics and sense of humor, as well as why he was called the Iron Guru, due to the diets, exercises, and routines that Vince would become famous for. Enjoy. Not long after that, well, a couple of years, let me see, uh, about two years later, I, I had the, I was going to go to college. I said, well, let, I, I can, since I can go to college anywhere, I'm going to go to college in California. My grandfather had left me in his will a small amount of money, not a lot, but enough to get me to California. So I came to California, and uh, uh, and the thing is, I, I joined Vince's gym and met Vince. And and uh, Pete had told me, he, you know, he told me how to deal with Vince. He said, he warned me. He said, when you first walk in, Vince is probably going to insult you. And he does that with everybody. He said, what you have to do is not take it personal, just laugh. So sure enough, I didn't have a car. I wound up getting an apartment in Van Nuys. I had to take a bus to go to Vince's gym. And I was wearing a sweatsuit, I remember. And I walked into Vince's gym for the first time. And there was Vince. And, and uh, you know, and I walked up. I said, I'd like to join the gym. And, uh, you know, and he says, uh, he goes like this. He leans over. He, he, uh, he Oh, he said to me, he said to me, how'd you get here, kid? I said, I don't have a car. I took the bus. And he leans over, he sniffs my sweatsuit, then he looks at me and says, I bet you didn't have any trouble getting a seat on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing he said to me. And like, <laughs> it's like I'm laughing now, I laugh. <laughs> he laughed with me. To make a long story short, we became good friends. Yeah, see, of course. <laughs> you have to understand, Vince Garanda was the kind of guy that you ever hear the expression, either love him or hate him. Yeah. He, was, he can be very irascible. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I remember uh, uh, there was a, he, he used to have a lot of famous actors training there. And one day he was training this guy who was, on, I can't remember the guy he was on a, he played a highway patrolman. I can't remember his name, uh, but anyway, he was training him. And uh, this guy liked that. Vince had, it was a small gym, just one room. He had a back door that opened up and he had the front door. And, you know, this guy wanted the door open to get air in the gym. And so some other member came in. And said to Vince, Vince was training the actor, and the other guy said to Vince, he said, "Could you close the doors? It's a little drafty in here." So uh, Eric Eric Estrada, that's the Eric name of the actor. Estrada, that's okay. what it was. And uh, and Vince says, uh, he says, Eric well, Eric likes the doors open. So if you don't like it, get the fuck out. You know, quit, get out to be your money back. He says it like that. So this is the reason. You know, that's an example of why some people did like Vince. He was very very forward. You know, I mean, uh, and he had this quirk where. If he showed you how to do an exercise, took the time to explain it, and you didn't do the exercise, he would actually stop talking to you. He would actually stop talking to you. He got very mad at a guy named Paul Hill, who was a competitor. He won the USA in the early 70s. I wound up training with Paul Hill at Vince's gym. He was a nice guy. But Paul liked to do heavy exercises that Vince didn't like. He actually tried to do squats at Vince's gym, and Vince hated squats. He said squats gave you big hips and a big butt. He thought that was ugly. And I remember he used to insult Paul Hill. Uh, one time I was sitting, Vince had a couple of chairs behind his desk in the front of the gym. I was sitting with Vince and Paul Hill was across the gym training, doing lunges, you know, because they didn't have squat racks at, at, at Vince's gym. He's doing lunges. So v Vince looks at me, he says, he's look at that guy, he says he's doing, he says he's already got a big ass and he's doing lunges. He says an ass exercise. He says, you know, that guy, he says, he says, that guy's got an ass so big. I can still remember. He says, he's got an ass so big. You can hide a small child under him in the rain and the kid wouldn't get wet. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Vince cracked me up. He was a really funny guy. I mean, it, it, he could be mean. A lot of it was mean spirited, but I just couldn't help it. I, I, he was never that way to me. And I, I just used to burst out. The things he would say was so, this guy was hilarious to me. <laughs> I, I, you know, 
I mean, one time, he, you know, he was going to show me an exercise. He says, walk this way. And he walks at him. He starts walking like like a, like a, like a very kind of exaggerated way. I mean, it was like a <laughs> He says, walk this way. Yeah. So he's <laughs> looking at the bed. He was just, he, he was almost like a, he was almost like a, a, a man child. He was like a, 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 when I knew him, he got it. He had to be in his 50s. You know, or early fifties, and you know, he, but he 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 had the 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 sense the the sense of humor like a child. He's yeah. always laughing and making jokes. You know, what I mean, that's just what I I thought he was a terrific guy. I mean, he's he's one of the most un- unforgettable characters I've ever met. I, I and extremely knowledgeable. I yeah. mean, uh, this guy they used to call him the guru, and, and if any, if that title fits anyone, it was Vince Garanda, because he was. I learned so much from that guy, way ahead of his time. You know, he, he's the one that put me on the turned me on to low carbohydrate diets. I got in the best shape of my life using low carbohydrate diets. I tried every diet known to mankind before that. Vince turned me on to it, and uh, I, I got in a, I, I competed in some. I actually won a couple of shows uh, using that type of diet. Yeah, nice. I went to teenage Southern California. I got second in the Mister Western America one year. You know, a couple of others. But what happened was, to be honest with you, and I, I before that, before I came out to uh, California. I also won some contests on the East Coast. Uh, teenage, I can't remember, it's some county in New Jersey. And I won a, a, a teenage Mr. East Coast, I think it was. Uh, and I placed in the teen, I didn't win it, but I placed in the teenage Mr. East in America. And at that contest, uh, uh, I got to tell you, it just reminded me, another quick story. Uh, I was, uh, it was held at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, the same place where they used to hold the, uh, the contest was called Mr. Eastern America, but it had the Mr. Eastern America and Teenage Eastern America. This was 1966, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, to open the contest, they all the body would line up on stage and they'd open the curtain. The audience would be there. and Everybody was just standing there, right? Lined up. And uh, I was lined up. And I th- this was one of my first contests. So, you know, in those days, the guys would put baby oil on. You know, you could see in the old photos to make themselves, I guess it would make highlight their muscle definition or whatever. Mm-hmm. I put too much baby oil on, to tell you the truth. So it was literally dripping off me when I was standing on stage. So the guy standing next to me turns to me and he says, he said, hey, you mind if I take some of that oil off? <laughs> put it on me, right? So he started taking the oil off me and putting it on himself, right? And I introduced, I said, I said, I'm Jerry Brainham. He says, nice to meet you. I'm Frank Zane. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it was Frank Zane, right? And he was, un- nobody had ever heard of him at that point. But I remember at that time I was writing to Bill Pearl. So I remember sending a letter to Bill Pearl. I said, Bill, watch out for this guy I just competed with. He won the Mr. Eastern America. I got second or third, but his name is Frank Zane. I predict that this guy is going to be a top bodybuilder. I'm making this prediction. I remember writing that to Bill Pearl. Nobody had ever heard of Frank Zane at that point. And I, I remember, because I was very impressed with the guy. You know, he didn't look anything. He was, you know, kind of like the way Arnold looked when he first showed me. He was like a little bit smoother than he was later on. He wasn't that very fine-tuned physique that won the Olympia three times. But he had a little small waist, I remember. And I remember when he did this pose like this, he had a beautiful V-shaped taper. Mm-hmm. I was very impressed with him. I said, wow, this guy, you know, look at the genetics on this guy. Mm-hmm. This guy's got to, he's got to probably win everything. You know, and so <laughs> he did. You know. that was That's fantastic. My- yeah. So I do hope you have enjoyed this fourth video interview with Jerry Branham on his time at Vince's gym and friendship with Vince Geronda. Jerry also talks about his competitive years and wins, which I was not aware of, as well as meeting Frank Zane on stage at the Mr. Eastern America in 1966 and predicting Frank Zane's success to come later on. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and please leave me your comments and click the bell button to be notified of future videos. Make sure to subscribe to the Applied Metabolics newsletter by Jerry Brainham if you do wish to enhance your knowledge on bodybuilding nutrition, especially as a natural bodybuilder. For more information, please see the description below. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to 
prove or disprove uh, Vince, but to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end of death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only by the right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. 
Supplements are just that, they supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain, I want to take this pre-workout. Doctors, no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way, I'm not going to give you. It's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was going to explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.